اسفر التاخير الاول بشكر احب اشكر استاذتي الفاضله رئيسه القسم الاستاذه الدكتوره انصاف النادي وبشكر دكتور شيف صقر ودكتوره هناء ماي دير سيستر اند فريند اند كوليكس فور يعني ذس از اوبورتونيتي طبعا انا عارفه ان انتوا بعد محاضره شيقه جدا من دكتور عبد الرازق فانا يعني هديكوا كده فان تايم وحاجه بسيطه تقضوا وقت لطيف وهنخلص بسرعه هي حاجه بس مجرد يعني ريفيجن على البيزك فيو اتمنى ان هي يعني تبقى لطيفة يعني. بعد دكتور عبد الرازق اتس ا فيري ديفيكولت ميشن يعني. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. ال فيري امبورتنت يعني البيزكس فيو يعني هاو تو جيف اتس نيمز يعني وي هاف ديفرنت هاو تو بوت ذا ترانسديوسر اكوردنج تو ذا سايت اوف ذا ترانسديوسر وي جيف ذا فيو اتس نيم. If we put it in the parasternal area, it will be parasternal view. If we put it in the apical, it will be apical, or according or subcostal. This is the three main uh, uh, basic view. And according to the plane, we cut is a heart. You know, this is a magic uh, organ is a 3D organ. So we have uh, to cut it in different planes. We have a part. Uh, yeah, we have long axis. We have short axis, and we have. The apical plane or the forward chamber plane. Okay, this is the third one. According to this view, we can see uh, we can put according to the site of the transducer and the cut of the plane. We give the name of the basic echocardiographic view. Yeah, this is another diagram, and we um, he I mean, this is diagram demonstrate where we put the transducer. The first one is a parasternal, the second one is the apical view at the apex, the third is the subcostal, and the fourth is the suprasternal view. <coughs> we will uh, uh, mention it in details later on. And this is another view for the planes. This is, uh, yeah, uh, this is the beam from the transducer cut the heart in different planes. As we mentioned, short axis, long axis, and the apical plane or for a chamber plane. The first basic view, this is uh, the very nice image we um, obtain from putting the transducer in the left sternal border in the, the left third to the fourth intercostal space. It differs from uh, person to person actually. I mean, we didn't have uh, exact point. We can put it, uh, sometimes we have to um, um, go higher in the second intercostal space. Sometimes it's, but uh, commonly it occurs in the left from the, we put the transducer user from the left third to the fourth intercostal is just beside the, the sternum just um, and the, our indicators this is we orient our indicators in the transducer towards the right shoulder usually and you and you um, nearly at the, the nine to ten o'clock position to obtain this is a very nice image we have to increase the depth of, uh, of the uh, and we have optimal depths about from 12 to 16 centimeters and we have to increase it to assess the, if we are going to assess if there is any pericardial or pleural effusion. From this nice image, we can assess the left ventricle, the mitral valve, the aortic valve, the left ventricular outflow tract, and the septum and right, out, right ventricular outflow tract. Um, it's very important to uh, to increase the depths because it's very if we and the proper alignment is very important to measure. Because uh, if you, if we, usually in this view, the apex of the left ventricle didn't appear, okay? If it's appear, it's called false apex of the left ventricle. We have to adjust the transducer again. And this is very important to align it. We have to see the delineation of the, you know, uh, of the left ventricle. We have to see the pericardium very clear. And we have to increase the depths. Because in, from this very beauty image, we have to uh, measure, we can uh, measure, we can obtain a lot of measurement about the left ventricle, we can assess the mitral valve, the aortic valve. And don't forget, we have the option of zooming in, so we can zoom any different structure in this is image. This is one of the, this is the first basic image. And don't forget, يعني, we can zoom any part, any structure. Uh, as um, seen in uh, in this diagram, but one of the very important one, and I, I I need to focus in the aortic root, and this is a different measurement at the the aorta. 
The first one is at, at the annulus, and the second one we measure the sinu uh, sinuses of Valsalva. The third one is a sinotubular junction, and this is how to measure the proximal ascending aorta. And this is very important view actually, and this is, we have uh, in this table the different uh, measurements differ from men to uh, women, and this is the average. From the parasternal long axis view, this is not a basic view actually, but we can obtain, this is a lovely view, just by tilting the transducer anteriorly and rotate it slightly clockwise to obtain the right ventricular outflow out tract view. We can see from this view the RVOT, two leaflet of the pulmonary valve and the pulmonary artery. And also from the parasternal lung axis view, we can tilt the face of the transducer towards the right hip to obtain the parasternal lung axis right ventricular inflow. And if you, yes, from this, okay. This is the coronary sinus, and R, yes, the right atrium and the RV, and the tricuspid valve in between, and we can see part of the inferior vena. After finishing the parasternal long, ex uh, long axis view, the next important basic view is the parasternal short axis view. From the same point, we put the transducer, parasternal short axis. It's parasternal. It's still in the same position. It's still in the same intercostal space, the third or the fourth intercostal space. And then we have to rotate the transducer 90 degree clockwise to the position that the beam is perpendicular to the, look, the long axis of the left ventricle. So we have different cuts, we have different, we rotate it in um, a gradual uh, manner, and at, uh, we tilt it to the transducer in a progressive way. First superiorly, then inferiorly. So we can cut, we have different uh, multiple uh, cuts. The first image will be at the level of the great visits the pulmonary uh, artery and the aorta. And this is uh, how we put the transducer and rotate it. This is the first cut we obtain from rotation of the transducer, 90 degree, by tilting it. We have different types of uh, the movement of the transducer. We have tilting, we have angling, we have rocking, we have sweeping, we have sliding, and this is the the structures we can see in the parasternal short axis view at the level of the great vessels. We can start from the right atrium, tricuspid valve, right ventricular outflow tract, pulmonary valve, and sometimes we can see the two major branches of the pulmonary artery, right pulmonary artery and left pulmonary artery. This is very important sometimes we can assess, especially in, in a patient we suspect congenital anomalies, we can assess Yes, any size of the pulmonary arteries. Don't forget we have the left atrium and the aortic valve. Here from the aortic valve, it's very important. You know, we, we, we demonstrate the three cusp of the aortic valve. And we can, this is the right coronary cusp, left coronary cusp, and non-coronary cusp. By just manipulation, an uh, expert can see the, um, the origin of the coronary arteries from this view. Just tilting, more tilting of the transducer, we will have another view. This is a parasternal short axis view at the level of the mitral valve. And at first, this is, this is uh, the left ventricle, this is the mitral valve, this is the left ventricle on the mitral valve, and this is the, we have two leaflets. Um, the, this is the interventricular septum and the RV. We have the anterior mitral valve leaflet and the posterior mitral valve leaflet. And this is very important, actually. If you have a patient, you have to. You can measure the. Uh, from here, we can assess the, the area of the mitral valve by using the planimetry. We can assess. We can assess the condition of the leaflet, any sickening classification. Classifications of the leaflet. And this is by planimetry. This is very important in case of mitral stenosis, for example. More tilting of the transducer, more inferior tilting of the transducer, we will have still having parasternal short axis view at the level of the papillary muscle. 
Now we are going to start to assess the segmental wheel motion. Yes, we have, يعني, but because of the time, we didn't mention it. That will be mentioned later in another uh, lecture. Um, we have different segmentation, يعني. but uh, the, the main structure here is the anterolateral papillary muscle and the posteromedial papillary muscle. And this is very important in case of ischemia. And this is the basic view, actually, of the parasternal short axis view. But if we do more tilting, we will can see the left ventricular apex. After finishing the parasternal view, we'll go for another plane. We will go for another side. We will put, we will sweep or slide the transducer at the apex of the heart. The first will be the apical for a chamber view. We'll move the patient. Yani actually, yani, uh, we have to put the patient in the left lateral position on his left side. We have to identify the apical impulse at first. And that's just inferior and medial to the left nipple usually, yani, most of the patient. But sometimes the patient have dilated heart. Yani. Sometimes the patient have a lot of complications. So yani, um, dilated due to valvular heart disease, by PASIC. So it's very important to, if you, any, to adjust the apical window, put your hand at first and feel the apical impulse. Usually the indicators point towards the left flank about three o'clock. Actually, any, some doctors and some experts do the opposite. And the optimal depth is 14 to 18 centimeters. And this is, we will gain, this is, Beauty. This is pretty diagram. This is, will be the left ventricle, left atrium, separated by the mitral valve, and the other side will be the RV and right atrium. From this view, yeah, we have to see the apex of the left ventricle. Usually, in this, yeah, to obtain an ideal apical for a chamber view, we have to see the apex. This is very important, okay? From the apical forward chamber view, we're still in the apical view, we have to tilt to the transducer posteriorly to just to image, to get an, a beautiful image of the coronary sinus. The coronary sinus will appear as a tilt, just like a tube-like structure. And instead, yeah, it will replace the mitral valve between the left ventricle and the left atrium. The membrane-like structure of the coronary sinus, it will end at the junction Oh, with a &E. This is the junction with the right atrium. And we can see another structure, but this is the main uh, uh, item we need to see. This is by just posterior angulation from the apical view, view, for a chamber view. We're still in the apical view, just by tilting the transducer anteriorly, we can get the apical five chamber view. Now we are going to see the uh, left ventricular outflow tract, the aortic valve, and the proximal part of the ascending aorta. Just, we're still in the same place, but just tilting the transducer. Sometimes you could see part of superior vena cava and right atrium on tilting behind the elevator. Left ventricular outflow tract. It will just by tilting anteriorly. We will see the RVOT and the pulmonary valve and the pulmonary artery. This is not a basic view, actually. This is not a routine in examination in most of the patient. But if you need to see it from the epical forest chamber. We return again to the apical forward chamber view. In the apical plane, we have to rotate the transducer 63 degree counterclockwise to have the apical two, two chamber view. And in the apical two chamber view, it will demonstrate the left atrium, the mitral valve, and the left ventricle. Now we finished the apical view. We are going to the subcostal for a chamber view. So we have the parasternal, the apical, and the third basic echocardiographic view will be the subcostal for a chamber view. How to gain it? We put the transducer simply in the, at the just a two to three centimeters plus as I write process. Just to, at first we direct the transducer towards the left shoulder, okay? 
And we have to increase the optimal distance. This is very important, actually, to increase the depth to see the whole um, structures we need to see. Uh, the optimal depth is about 16 to 24 centimeters. Yeah, and it's better to get uh, to hold an inspiration to get it if it's some difficulty in getting it. This is view is very important. In some cases, we have difficulty in uh, difficult to obtain the parasternal view or the apical view, especially in, 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 in pediatric group guys. They depend a lot on the subcostal view. And from this, it's very important to assess the septal defect either the atrial or the ventricular defect, and very important is the RV wall sickness. From the subcostal view, we're still in the subcostal plane. We just move, rotate the transducer. We have, tran you know, another movement of the transducer, just 90 degree counterclockwise. Now the probe will be indicated towards the head of the patient, this is to see, to obtain the image of the inferior vena cava, merging into the right atrium. And this is very important to, you know, in assessment or measurement of the right atrium pressure. Because we need sometimes, yani, in a patient, mechanically ventilated patients, in a patient with a lot of uh, other conditions, we need to assess the inferior vena cava. Uh, we use it to assess right atrial pressure by the collapse and the diameter of the inferior vena cava. In this table, we saw uh, a lot of, uh, yeah, we have diameters from 21 millimeters, if it's less, and there is a change with respiration. More than 50%, usually the right atrium pressure by millimeter mercury is about five. If the, there is the inferior vena cava diameter is less than 21 millimeter and the decrease, it changes respiration less than 50%, it's about, 10 millimeter mercury. If the diameter is more 21 and the decrease by 50%, it's about 15, or the decrease less than 50% is 20, it's very easy to remember. The last one is the suprasternal view. The suprasternal notch aortic valve view. It's a it's long axis view, actually. And we have to put a patient in different position. At first, we will the position the patient in a spine position with a pillow behind his, his shoulder. So we will tilt his head backward. Then we will move his head towards the left. And then we will put the transducer in the suprasternal notch. At first, it will be facing, like, the, like in the inferior vena cava, it will be facing the 12 o'clock. And then we will go for clock, just rotation, clockwise rotation towards the one o'clock, and then tilt it according, and you took cut to make the plane cut the right nipple and the tip of the left scapula. And this is a beautiful image we are going to obtain. This is the right pulmonary artery and this is the arch, okay? We have the ascending, descending, and the branches of the arch as demonstrated in this view. And this is very important, some condition. And especially if you have a child, you are going to uh, have, uh, you need to do an echocardiography for a child. Don't forget the supra external notch view. Thanks. Thank you. We thank Dr. Mona Malik on the Supreme Court. Mona, from the Supreme Court, we have the name of the Supreme Court. The second session, Dr. Abdelazi and Dr. Ahmed Wafa.